And now, this is a little segment we like to call Thanks for Writing. Zetstar writes, I was wondering which do you prefer, dinosaur or river adventure? I like dinosaur more. Now, Zetstar, I believe, is referring to dinosaur, the dark ride adventure at Animal Kingdom, and Jurassic Park river adventure at Islands of Adventure. You want to throw in the the original at at Hollywood, uh, Universal Studios Hollywood. So I guess take your pick between those three. But Zetstar likes dinosaur best. So what are we doing? We're we're comparing dinosaur rides? Yes, these are dinosaur-themed rides. What about the one in uh, Pigeon Forge? Oh! Oh, what is that called again? Oh, shit. I had to bring it up, didn't I? Jurassic Jungle Boat Ride. Ah, Jurassic Jungle Boat Ride. Yeah, that old Jurassic Jungle. What about that one, huh? That doesn't get out here? (laughs) (laughs) One of the strangest dark ride adventures I've ever been on. (laughs) Oh, yes. One of the strangest uh, pieces of ride hardware, right? Yeah. The, the, the boat is like a, a, what was it? Some kind of a chain boat system? It was, yeah, I think so. The yeah, boat, it wasn't free floating. No, like the boat's on arms. Yeah, and, and yeah it, like, that's right. At each turn, at each corner, it would like switch from one arm to another arm. <laughs> right? The boat would stop yeah. and then it would like switch arms. It's really weird. Would you recommend Jurassic Jungle if you're in Pigeon Forge? If you want to laugh, <laughs> okay, um, or cry when you consider how much it costs, <laughs> you know, if you have like a family of four, it's a good chunk of change right there. Mm, yeah, and uh, yeah, when you finally when you get out of that thing, you uh, might be crying. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's fun for the goof. There you go, Avatar Jurassic Jungle Boat Ride. Yep. What he says, dinosaur is better. Yes, he likes dinosaur best. Dinosaur better than... No, Jurassic all the way. It's just got more going on. It has the drop. Which version? The... California's better, right? No, I thought... <laughs> no? I thought we figured out that Orlando was better. They improved it. We did it on this show. I don't yeah. know. Yes, Orlando's better. They, they improved that one. I uh, forget They worked out the which. kinks. They worked out with the kinks. Uh... <laughs> They did some, uh, you really got me now. <laughs> right? Yeah. They did that all day and all, all day. And they figured it out. They got, and the ride got better. So there you go. Um, yes. Jeep didn't work very well, so the box was better. And... It's darker. They figured out where you don't... The T-Rex is not revealed until the end. Yes. Right? Yeah. They, yeah. They didn't, uh, California kind of spoils the reveal. There's an early reveal and then a full body reveal later, but it kind of doesn't work uh, as well. Yeah, Orlando did the scratch on the side of the wall. Yeah, that's a better. It's not a reveal. It's just getting you more amped up. Yeah, it's very ominous. For the eventual reveal. All right. Yeah, Orlando Jurassic Park is uh, best of those. I th- I, for real, I, I think it is. Yeah, I would agree. I'm not the biggest fan of Dinosaur. It's fine. It's good. It's it's just the, one of the noisiest damn rides with some of the lowest lighting. Oh, well, that's what it is. It's it's it is kind of a classic dark ride in that sense. Yeah, I mean it's got a lot of movement, because but it's yeah, the movement on the vehicle is pretty good. But it's 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 all about just dark and, and noise. Yeah, but yeah, for for me, not as good. Not as good as Jurassic. You, you're getting you're getting uh, shoot the shoots out of it. Even on a bad day when a lot of the animatronics, like the outside ones, don't really work that well, which. I've seen quite often. <laughs> um, you're still getting, you're still getting to shoot the shoots out of it. You're still getting something out of the deal. So I don't know. That's just my opinion. All right. Well, good questions, Avatar. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening. Thanks for writing. Well, guess what? What? Our old friend Ben Mickey's at it again. He writes. What are your thoughts on the Paramount Parks revivals in Spain and Britain? for more destination parks with elaborate rides. Wow. Uh, did I know about this? <laughs> I don't even know if I knew about this. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure either. What is this about? Just looking at this quickly. So, this goes back to October 10th, 2011. Oh, it was reported that Paramount would develop a theme park in Spain. Work was supposed to start in 2012. Uh, it was supposed to, uh, it was going to be called Paramount 
Merc is it Mercia? Uh, it was, it was, it's going to rival Disneyland Paris as a European tourist destination. Uh, it was to debut in the spring of 2015. So, has that happened yet? I think not, <laughs> right? I don't think so. So, probably not going to happen. London Paramount, um, October 8th, 2012. Plans were unveiled for that one. Uh, Paramount Kent. Timetable, this is, uh, supposed to open in 2021. All right. So this one at least hasn't, uh, hasn't gone past their original completion date yet. So I, again, though, I don't think they've even broken ground. I don't think. So Ben Mickey, um, these kind of things, you gotta wait till they happen or at least get to a point where you know they're definitely going to happen. Uh, that's, that's why we don't really react to these kind of announcements uh, normally. Yeah, because they get announced all the time and then nothing ever happens. Yeah, yeah. This is like the the, the polar coasters mm -hmm. we've been through yeah. before, and uh, you know, very unlikely that any of those will ever be built. And you know, we'll believe it when it when, it, when we see it. We're real, we're realists on this show, if you haven't noticed already. <laughs> we don't just caught up in hype just for hype's sake. I don't believe it until they actually open the front gates to those places. Oh well, we got to bring it up. So, Big Daddy Cool, he writes, he repeated his comment, his grand comment for the show. Great show. <laughs> so we gotta just throw that out there. Uh, my dad, yes, great show, he writes, uh, about the Arrow episode. The oh, one okay. where we talked about the legacy of Arrow. He, he really did. And, and he told me, I, I talked to him, of course, about it too, but he writes, great show. Thank you. On our website. You can comment on our, on our website, guys. <laughs> we, don't, we haven't gotten too many on there yet. So maybe you don't, just don't realize you can comment on our website, so please do. Uh, it's totally free. You get the episode a week early from YouTube, and it doesn't cost you anything to do that. Okay, this next comment from... Oh, boy. <laughs> That's never good. Gnil2000? G-N-I-L... <laughs> G-N-I-L... G-N-I-L 2000. You sure it's not just nil? It's a silent G? It could be. I really don't know. Nil 2000. Anyway, this person... Gnil writes... Is... Referring to an episode we did uh, called Disney vs. Universal, and it was about the, uh, the approaches that the, the two companies are taking with their parks these days. That came out back in July of 2014, and Nil 2000 wanted to know if our thoughts had changed since then. No. Yeah, my, really. my opinion has not changed. Next comment. Uh, <laughs> Waker Productions writes, we had a production company write us, apparently. Ooh, I don't know. Waker Productions wants to know, why doesn't Disney count towards golden tickets? Uh, I guess we said that on one of the golden ticket episodes. Probably all of them. <laughs> you probably, probably came up at some point. And this person asking us why. Well, you really got to ask Amusement Today. Hey, Amusement Today, why, do, why, don't the, why doesn't Disney count? Uh, we're just commenting on the fact that it doesn't seem to count because uh, D Disney has... They have some pretty superior stuff in a lot of categories and it doesn't seem to ever factor in to the winners of the golden tickets. And that's just being fair. Again, I'm not a Disney guy, but there are some things like the, uh, the, the like five-star restaurant quality food at Epcot, which I know came up on the episode, that never gets factored in. You know, clearly, right. when they say best food, uh, I, I, as far as the golden ticket, it's being awarded to like the best, more typical or traditional park food, or the best regional park, regional or traditional park food, you might say. And they're excluding like, full-service restaurants and stuff like that. So yeah. it, that's, that's probably the best example I can give where Disney's ex excluded from a golden ticket. Uh, and the other things too, it just says never seems to rate you know, cleanliness and and most beautiful and stuff like that. Friendliest uh, or friendliest? It's like they never. I just honestly don't think they really take Disney in, into consideration. Not which really. is fine. I personally kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think Disney pats themselves on the back enough. But it is. But th then there are a couple instances where Disney and Universal get in there. And only a couple of awards every year, like the Dark Ride, or I think, or something. Right? They get, yeah. They always throw a couple of those on there when you read the top five. So, um, it's inconsistent. I mean, it really, they should just be honest that it's excluding those. 
that it's it's the best regional park awards. Well, they want to have their cake and eat it too. Yeah, they still want to be able to throw Spider Man and Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey on, in there. Yeah, it's like they can't deny those rides. Yeah, you know, or Tower of Terror, right. whatever else they put in there. And it's like, yeah, but it's kind of, you know, it's just weird because it doesn't seem like the Disney rides count for most of it. Right. So we don't know why exactly. We don't, you know, but I, again, I can theorize just because they really do want to be uh, a publication that supports the entire industry. So they purposely make it so they can get the, all the, the, the greater regional industry involved. You know, they, they hold the awards every year at a kind of a regional place. Yeah, they do. They don't, they never hold it in Disney or Universal, so. And it's the regional parks that are more proud to get the awards. Those are the parks that will put the banners Oh, definitely. Uh, Universal doesn't advertise the fact that uh, yeah. Harry Potter won Golden Ticket or Spider-Man never. or whatever. They don't care. Yeah. So it, that's probably part of the reason, too. There you go, Wicker Productions. Mr. Muffy wants to know... Hey, Mr. Muffy, how's she doing? Brian, what are your feelings on the Hatbox Ghost? Oh, you know what? <laughs> that motherfucking Hatbox Ghost! Is she gonna bring that up again? No, you're gonna bring it up again, but you, I actually answered that comment, alright? And I... Oh, I can't. That's it! I'm out of here. You ruined another one. Oh, you're proud of yourself, Mr. Muffy. Guys! Oh, shit! I slammed my water down. Some water got in some places. Alright. Nate Kenny. Nate Kenny has written us a comment. He is excited that this park... He is referring to Indiana Beach. At least has a future now that Apex Parks purchased it. IB, Indiana Beach, or I guess the Crow, IB Crow maybe, will finally be in the hands of someone who knows how to run a park again. Yeah, you know, I like the fact we had never been to Indiana Beach until just last year. And you can hear all about our first impressions of that park. Uh, we did a whole episode on it. It definitely had some strong positive attributes and a few maybe more than a few negative things or just kind of mediocre to negative things I mean it was run down in some aspects so but it definitely has potential so I like the idea that uh, someone's coming in to make it better make it great again if it was I don't I was never there again up before last year so I don't know if it was totally great at one point but I'm sure to some of the locals it was and uh, I'm sure even they would have to have admitted that it had seen better days, you know, going into the more recent years, the 21st century years. So, yeah, good. Good for them. I'm glad someone's coming in to revitalize it. And uh, from what I've heard, they're putting some money into it right away. First season. They're going to do some things, including, I think, possibly finishing that entrance that was never completed. And we, we do talk about that a little bit in length at this, uh, if that makes any sense. A little bit in length. Uh, <laughs> on this show or the yeah the episode about Indiana Beach so I think it's good I'm, I'm, I'm I think it's positive I guess I'm excited sure I'll throw my hat in there I'm excited too yeah I think it'll be good it, hopefully I mean Apex Parks group it looks like they own some like mini golf and go-karts type places oh there's just there's a speed in. park and a couple of water parks so this is Indiana Beach is the first amusement park that they've uh, bought it looks like Okay, so this is the biggest uh, venture they're entering in. Yeah, it looks like it. There we go, Nate. Uh, are you related to... I have a question for you. Are you related to the uh, the Kenny Wood family? That Kenny family. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. Okay, we got another comment here. Well, got another question here from Zatstar. Another... Zavatar. Which do you like better? Justice League or Dark Castle? Wow, um, wow, that's, that's a tough one, because I really did like Justice League. Justice League is very, very good. Oh, oh, man. I don't know, that's, that's, we didn't cover that in that episode, did I say something? I guess we didn't. I don't think so. If he's asking. I don't, I, I it, that's a tie. I know that's kind of a cop-out answer, but... <laughs> I really think that's one of those, whichever one I'm on. Oh. 
I really don't want to give the same answer. Um. Ah, uh, ah, uh, but it's tough, right? Yeah. If I can only, like, ride one the rest of my life, if I want to think about it that way. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really tough. I, I, the Dark Castle I want to say more movement, I think, with the ride vehicle. It does doesn't have the shooting, which... Does it? Well, they keep it more stationary for the shooting, I guess. Yeah. In Justice League, right? I want to say Dark Castle by a hair. I... I still... I like the theme better in Dark Castle. I like... It's, 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 it's darker in tone. It's darker in, uh, just actually darker. Yeah. Yeah, you're in a dark castle. It's drab. It's, it's, it's meant to be darker. Uh, and I do like that better. They fell short, though. You go into a fireplace with no real fire. In fact, it's not even hot. Yes, that is... They didn't that do, should have been correct. They didn't do fire or even the heat effect. Yeah. It's just red lights. And some mess. That's it. That's really weak. You know, they went real fire. Justice League. I feel like there's more... There's more interactive sets. There's more interactive set parts. On a Justice League. There might be. Because really... I mean, it's not just all screens, Dark Castle, but all the action is screens. Yes. When, when you do pass some other stuff, it's just still stuff. It's just pictures on walls. And then the, the giant fireplace is there, but it doesn't move, nothing else. There's no other moving parts. No animatronics. No, no animatronics. That's, that's why it's very tough, but I still like it a lot. So that's why I'm kind of going tie. I like that Dark Castle has an original concept theme. Oh, a character that they made up. Yeah, as opposed to Ludwig. the DC comic book characters with Justice League. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with using established characters. Yeah. But I, I find original concept rides that whenever a park puts that out, I just always find that so fascinating. Okay. Or you'll give that a few more like bonus points. Yeah, it's like they went the extra effort to try and create their own universe with this. I, I like that. I do like that. And, and I wish Parks would do that more. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, the, day, the days of that are pretty much over. Yeah. Uh, in some ways, Dark Castle, at least in this country, I mean, Dark Castle will probably be one of the last of its kind. Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, even, even Bush Parks, with like Sesame Street, they did not that long after that. Mm. They started going into the licensed characters' territory not too long after uh, Dark Castle went in. You know what? If you're going to say Dark Castle by hair, I'm going to say Justice League by hair. Okay. I'm going to negate you. So that there there we get our time. So it levels out in the end. <laughs> I'm going to say the, the interactive set pieces and animatronic. And then there's another, like, it's like Lex Luthor's lair part of the ride. But, it, but it's like, it's still kind of, it's still a screen, but it's like a different screen. Where it's supposed to be a hologram or something, that that room. Oh, I know what you're talking about. So yeah. it's like another spin on it. So it's like it's just I just feel like it's more varied. It is, yeah. Justice uh, League is. Then Dark Castle, which is a lot of the same thing. Yeah. It's a lot of screen after screen after screen. It's weird. Um I guess Dark Castle is kind of more like Transformers. It is. It's like a better version of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Transformers is just shit. It benefits greatly from the unique characters and yeah Dark Castle is just it's a much better version of, of if, if you're not gonna do physical set pieces that move and interact with you yeah alright WS6 Dylan what do you think that stands for WS6 it's not a Six Flags thing right oh whatever WS6 Dylan is it Bob Dylan it spells it the same it could be maybe uh, Bob Dylan's writing us Robbie Zimmerman it's what is that? <laughs> it's his real name. That's his real name. Robert Zimmerman. That's Bob Dylan. How come Goliath <laughs> and Six Flags Great Americans? <laughs> right, that's him. Oh, yes. sorry, I was reading it in his voice. We gotta get some context here. This is a comment uh, about our King of the Coasters tournament. Uh, we haven't mentioned that yet on the show, actually. It'll most likely still be going on when this comes out. So. Uh, it's a fun little, uh, thing. We're trying single elimination tournament, doing wooden roller coasters, and, uh, you can vote on the matchups, so it's in the second or maybe third quarterfinal round by now, so check it out on the website. Uh, anyway, uh, comment about that tournament. 
WS6 Dylan wants to know, how come Goliath at Six Flags Great America is there, as in, is part of the tournament? It's a wooden roller coaster tournament. So it's wooden roller coasters from four regions around the country uh, paired up into matchups. He's saying it's not a wooden coaster, period. So very emphatic with that. Well, there's a second part, but we'll get to it. Um, it's not a wooden coaster, period. Um, I think technically it is. Oh. It is a wooden coaster. Uh, yeah. It doesn't in any way ride like a wooden coaster. No, and, and that may I'll, be I'll give you that. what he's referring to or this person is referring to. It does have a lot of steel support structure. And and actually, there was a comment we got. I don't know. If, did we go through it on the first comment show? I don't know if we did. Uh, it might have been one of our, uh, our usual suspect commenters who uh, said something about uh, one of the rides having a, a wooden roller coaster having a steel structure. And... Um, I guess it's not that well known a fact, but one of the considered one of the one of the quintessential wooden roller coasters ever built, or at least still standing, is the Coney Island Cyclone. And believe it or not, the Coney Island Cyclone has a steel structure. It actually does, yeah. Um, it's not made of wood. Typical wooden roller coaster track, but on steel supports. So all you got to do is mention that, and then that pretty much negates any argument about whether a support structure. Uh, would negate whether a wooden roller coaster is a wooden roller coaster. You could do the flip side of that too. I mean, would you call Gemini at Cedar Point a wooden coaster? Oh yeah. Or the Cedar Creek Mine Ride, which are steel coasters. They have steel rails, yeah. steel track, but it's a uh, wooden support structure on those. So yeah, support structure does not define what the what the ride is. Right. The type of roller coaster. Uh, it's it's all on the track. So, but uh, to be fair, I mean, uh, we're just bringing this up in case anyone else out there is thinking these things. Uh, Dylan over here doesn't say that. He just says it's not a wooden coaster, period. We don't know exactly why he thinks it's not. Uh, but if, if you think it's a support structure, you know, that's not really good enough. If you're thinking um, that it's smooth, okay, it is, but it doesn't... That doesn't really matter. It doesn't change <laughs> the materials that the track was made out of. Right. So... And then the only other thing maybe that uh, Dylan is referring to is I know on Goliath at least the steel topper that they put over the the wooden track that the uh, the train actually rides on it goes over the entire width of the wooden track usually on a wooden coaster it's a smaller thinner piece of steel that goes in narrower the, gauge yeah that goes in the and that runs along the center of the wooden track and it's a little harder to see it kind of blends in with the wooden track but with Goliath it's like a bright orange and it goes over the entire area of it okay so all wooden coasters have a steel a thin piece of steel that runs along the center of the track right the the wheels of the train actually never contact wood right it's still it's, it runs on steel right so that doesn't count as being a steel coaster either. yeah so in in a world where if you're only going to allow for the two classifications wood or steel you gotta go wood on this one yeah you gotta now I mean really and I, and I do understand where he's coming from because it doesn't ride in any way like the Conan Cyclone or any other traditional wooden roller coaster up until Rocky Mountain came on the scene pretty much, pretty much. Give, well, or, give or take the Intamins yeah but even those ride much more like wood than uh, than the Rocky Mountains do it's like Rocky Mountain took it to another level a little more with, like wood with, yeah, with the inversions uh, that's like total steel so I do understand that and you know person, I, I, I don't know if you want to make a third category I'm okay with that because I do understand where where you would be coming from by kind of thinking like, well, this really shouldn't be put up against the Cyclone. Uh, or even some of like the 90s ones, like, you know, that are, that are left that haven't, haven't gotten Rocky Mountain treatments yet. Like Mean Streak. You know, I do I do understand how that is a very different ride experience than Goliath at Six Flags Great America. I do. I get it. Yeah, I understand that too. So I, whatever, you, you know, some people are, have taken to calling them hybrids. I, I don't know. I well, think that it's unnecessary because you can't categorize the ride based on how it rides. So say Ninja at Six Flags Over Georgia versus Medusa or the Hulk. I mean, the Hulk's gone now. But like a B&M sit-down coaster. I mean, the, the technology changed in how rides were designed. 
So Slow Coasters got smoother, and well, Wind Coasters got smoother too. It's it's like Arrow versus B and M. So it, if you want to go yeah. there, it's like yeah. So I don't think you can categorize based on how the thing rides. Right. No that one's really no one's gonna sense. say B and M shouldn't be in the same category as an Arrow Looper, like right. you know, Vortex versus Medusa or whatever. That's a, that's a well. Discovery Kingdom is still called Medusa. <laughs> Bizarro now at uh, Great, Great Adventure. But yeah, they do, yes. B&M designs are much smoother. Right. So having a third hybrid category, that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, it needs to be something solid that you can actually define. All right. So you don't like that. And I guess officially there hasn't been one created. RCDB, right? I'm pretty sure Goliath is wood, right? Yes. They call it wood. Okay. Yeah. And that's what you got to do, you know? Unless you do want to make the third category. Because then that ride experience is totally subjective. And, and in some ways, the inversions separated it more for me. Mm -hmm. More than being smooth. Because that's like the El Toro. Uh, now, the one doesn't bring up El Toro, but like, he could have also said El Toro shouldn't have been on, which is also part of the tournament. But he didn't, yeah. he didn't say that. But what about, like, Son of Beast? Did you ever not consider that a wooden coaster when it had the inversion? Son of Beast had, had the inversion but the rest of the ride was extremely traditional, right. wood, all rattly. And, and even for that inversion, it went to steel track. For that yeah. Uh, but I never thought about it as something other than a wooden coaster. Right. Yeah, it's... it's uh, That's why it's on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, because... Yeah, what, what are you going to do? It, it is wood. Call it schmud. I don't know. <laughs> if you really feel you need to. But... Here at Thanks for Writing, we gotta go with what's official, and it's what. And yeah. that's why it's on the tour. And you have your chance to vote, so vote against it. <laughs> I think it's, uh, well, I think actually the first round might be closed now. Uh, okay, next part of the comment. And then you don't have Viper or American Eagle on even the best of the rest. How come? Uh, <laughs> so this is Viper, American Eagle at Six Flags. Great America. Great America. So, this guy, obviously, Great America fan. Yeah. Uh, or I guess probably a, maybe that's his local park. Uh, great park, actually. Yeah, it is. Great lineup. Uh, he's upset that Viper and American Eagle weren't on there. Well, the tournament could only hold 32 roller coasters, so uh, there is also a best of the rest category where you get to vote on uh, some other key notable rides, at least in, in the opinion of this show. And he's upset that those two in particular were not on there originally. Well, WS6 Dylan, um, check it out now. You might be surprised. We may have had a couple of late entries. Uh, <laughs> see, we read your comments and we listen. That's what we do here. That's how we uh, try to encourage more comments, because we always read them and we'll always listen in some way, shape, or form. So I think that's been corrected. And I don't have anything against those two rides. Actually, I had pretty good times on both of those rides. Uh, listen to our whole discussion on that part. Actually, I don't know if we got that far, because we, we go into so many so much detail about so many other rides. I don't know if those rides really came up, but uh, I will say now, uh, if I didn't mention it earlier, I had very good rides on uh, both of those. Rode both sides of American Eagle, and uh, did re up on Viper. I'd done it a bunch of years ago, but got to do it again last year. And I found American Eagle, I thought there was a good ride in there somewhere. I feel like it's it's definitely past its prime, and it suffers from too much trim breaking and uh, just general generally not being kept up as as well as it could be. Kind of typical for Six Flags, unfortunately. But I, I could see where it was something pretty cool back when it first opened, and I can still appreciate it. that giant helix at the back end is is kind of a a marvel. <laughs> uh, and uh, Viper is, is actually pretty fun. It is a lot of fun. At Great America. I, 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 you enjoyed them both. Or at least Viper, you did. I definitely like Viper was more, better. I think I was more for it than you were, but... Yeah. I remember uh, we both had a good time on Viper. It's a fun ride. So you got your chance, Dylan. Vote. Vote away. Isaac Moore writes, I don't know which one of you is which, but one of you guys sounds exactly like Bob Odenkirk, which is pretty <laughs> awesome. I, I have to assume he's referring to me. I think he is. Brian. Uh, yes, I'm Brian. I'm Brian. I'm Andrew. I, don't, I, I sound like Bob Odenkirk. I don't really hear it, but yeah, I, I'm not I, sure. I knew he meant me because I, de I think I sound more like him than you do. Yes. 
but I don't think I sound just like him. But hey, hey, hey you know, it's it's all subjective, I guess. Sure. I guess he thinks I sound like. That's fine. I'll take it. <laughs> I don't mind Bob Odenkirk. Sure, I like him. I'll take it. Uh oh, did I mention that my dad <laughs> wrote a great show? Oh, did he now? <laughs> uh, he wrote that about our Legacy of Arrow episode. No, I'm sorry. Well, it's about Legacy of Arrow, the documentary, but our episode is called Me and My Arrow, a legacy. He liked the fact that we were so positive. All right. Oh, we got another comment here from Marie Lupia. She writes, Hey, I'm one of the makeup artists working on Haunt. Specifically, I do a lot of ironworks. So she's talking about King's Dominion. We've gone to King's Dominion's Haunt uh, two years in a row. And we did an episode each time, a Halloween special. Uh, so she heard one of them and she's excited that she's a makeup artist. Uh, a lot of ironworks. Oh, she also does Lockdown and Club Blood Monsters. And a bunch of others, in parentheses. Just wanted to say thanks for the critique. It's really interesting hearing about Haunt from the guest's point of view. Well, you're very welcome. Yeah, we love hearing from people who actually work at these parks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're huge in, in Virginia. We're huge <laughs> around Doswell, apparently. Uh, we got a lot of comments, a lot of feedback fr from people who have worked Haunt for the first time we did it, the first episode we did. We, we liked it so much, that, uh, and the comments didn't hurt either, that we felt uh, we'd be really welcome to come back again, and we did. We went back a second year in a row. So, uh, this is about the second episode, right? The one from this past Halloween? Yeah, 2015. 2015 yeah. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, Marie, um... We love King's Dominion Home. We think, uh, it's really great. Yeah, we think you guys do a great job there. I guess the critique was probably Ironworks, because I do a lot of Ironworks. That's the, uh, for those of you who don't know, that's the steampunk theme area. Right? <laughs> what do we say? <laughs> steampunk? I hate that shit! I mean, overall, for the the event, they have uh, they have some very good makeup. Oh, they definitely do. Yeah. All right, Marie. Well, again, keep up the great work. I hope you uh, return for a haunt for another another season. JP Marcotte writes, "I think it would be cool if you guys posted on thanks for reading, which is a uh, bonus section we have on their website. Yeah, part of the extras on the website." Click extras on the top menu and you'll, you'll find it. I think it'd be cool if you guys posted on Thanks for Reading your top 10 coasters. I'd love to see those as you and Brian have some pretty different views on coasters. Thanks for reading. It's a, it's, so it's a, it's a place uh, for some written content uh, that we'll do from time to time. All right, so JP wants us to write about what our top 10 roller coasters? Yeah. And what was the second part? That we have different... He thinks we have pretty different views on coasters. Huh. Pretty... I don't know about that. I'm not entirely sure where he's getting that from. I, I always think that we have very similar views on coasters. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a... But we'll, I'm not an outsider, so it's we'll, difficult we'll break, to see that. Break the fourth wall for a second. Yeah, it's personally, it's one of our, our fears that we're too similar sometimes. Yeah. That it almost <laughs> makes the show a little less interesting. We definitely have uh, plenty of topics that we don't agree completely on. Uh, although, yeah, I don't know if roller coaster type is one of them, though. <laughs> but yeah, like you said, it's uh, it's different when you're in it and, as opposed to listening to it. So, I don't know. Maybe it does come off that way to some to people. Maybe we are more different than we realize. And we just... I, I don't, mm. Couldn't tell you. So he wants us to each do one. Right, a top ten coasters. And then, like, do it separately. Not tell each other and then see what happens. Yeah, we've done uh, quite a few now. It's in... Uh, it's parks. We've done top ten parks. We 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 just kind of went right past coasters, and so we uh, went right for top ten parks, and we did a bunch of that. But yeah, those were things that we worked on together. Um, I'll, I'll give it to to JP. It's an interesting idea. That's gonna be really hard, at least for me. Yeah, we'd ha we'd have to do it right. Y you gotta categorize it. You'd have to keep. Wooden you don't want to do top ten just all every roller coaster. That's too hard. Oh, how far would you want to... You gotta... It's gotta be... At least wood or steel. And then, you know... Yeah, I guess you don't have to wait for... It. I mean, you could do, like, separate out inverts or something. But then that gets too specific, then. I 
just do wood, or, wood and steel. So we are going to do that? We're going to work on that? Eh, maybe. Okay, we'll see. We've got, we got a few things in the works right now. A few surprises for you guys. In the coming weeks and months. But, uh, yeah, we'll try to get around to this too. At some point. Sure. Why not? We got, we got, we got a couple, couple bonus comments. A couple of bonus ones. Alright. Nick B. Nicky B. We call him Nicky B Stings. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> but we do. Nick B wrote a comment on our Flat Rides episode. Oh, wonderful. Says that he loves Strob Towers, and he particularly likes Zumanjaro and the Larson Drop Tower. Okay, which is... Now, the Larson Drop Tower... We've been on at least one of those, right? Right. Knobles has one of those. That's the Knobles one, okay. Which is Atmosphere, I think? Atmosphere? Something like that. Yeah. And really, I just wanted to comment on how crazy that Larson Drop Tower is. Oh, <laughs> we must have gotten to it on that episode, right? The Knobles? Uh, I don't remember. Or maybe we didn't. But yeah, that is, it is a crazy experience. It feels like it breaks inches from the ground. As in later than most drop towers. Yeah. Like, you really, you're almost, you feel like your feet are almost touching. It feels ground. like there's, yeah, just zero room for error there. And it's a little freaky. It's a, a little too freaky for me. Yeah, at least at the, at, at the Knobles installation, it does, yeah, it, it, it waits a little longer <laughs> than most drop towers. You really get close to the ground before you come to a stop. And we kind of, while we were waiting, we kind of noticed it. So we were we were kind of ready for it, but then when you're on it, it's even more noticeable. Like those extra few feet where you're still dropping, is it's noticeable. Yes, because, oh, it you know, definitely is. Uh, you, you really, because, I mean, SNSs don't even come close to the ground. Generally on their drops, you start like, you like slingshot back up before you get too low. And then even the Intamins, the Intamin second generation ones with the magnets, it's... you stop higher up. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Stratosphere. That's the oh, name of the Knobles one. Oh, Stratosphere. There we go. That makes sense. And it's like about 150-ish feet tall. Yeah, it's, it's tall. It's tall enough. So it's like, yeah, I was gonna it, it's say. It's not small. It may not sound that tall compared to some of these other SNS towers, but yeah, it is definitely tall enough. Yeah, it's not like you're 80 foot. Right. Double, double shot SNS installation. It's it's pretty tall. And uh, uh, and Dumanjaro also is really crazy. Uh, and we did a whole review on that. Well, that's tallest in the world. Yeah, that's... So check out that episode where we reviewed that. That's a whole experience in itself. Another, another uh, extra on our website. Also on the website, we have a new thing called Ride Noise. And they are short little audio clips of different rides. You have to figure out what the ride is based on just that three second clip. Do we want the the responses to actually come up with the specific ride? Some of these sounds are a little more general. Like the sound, the first sound that we put up is, I'm going to reveal it, so if you don't want to know what it is, shield your ears. But it is an arrow lift hill. Now, a couple of people commented and they were correct that it was an arrow lift hill. But the people that commented were naming specific arrow rides. Uh, one person said Loch Ness, I think. Another one asked if it was Drakenfire. Oh. And yet someone else special for me. was sure that it was Magnum. <laughs> now, I didn't intend for people to name specific arrow rides, but this is fine. It's actually very interesting. Uh, I think it's great. I, I love the enthusiasm. Yeah. Yeah, you guys so far that commented are, are awesome. Uh, Nick B did, did a, an especially great job. He, he actually sampled a bunch of different uh, roller coaster videos to really try to nail down which which specific arrow lift hill this was. So uh, I actually love it. I love that they went the extra mile. So go for it, guys. I mean, there'll be more general ones uh, in the future. Uh, if you want to try to figure out the exact ride, if you think you can, go for it. Yeah, we'll take it. Other sound clips will we'll tell be you what much it, more specific. It, it uh, will be from a specific ride, and you'll know, you'll be able to figure out what that is. Alright, so there'll be some of those. Uh, but some of these are more generic sounds, like an arrow lift hill. <laughs> yeah, I guess that initially that's what 
you were looking for, right? That's what we were looking for. Just that's all I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah. But just arrow lift hill. I go for it. Try to fuck it at the right. But sure. In that case, these will be the hardest ones. And, and they will be, yeah. And then the other ones will be a little easier. The ones that are from a specific ride in the first place. But there really is only one answer. Those will be easier. But I, I was going to say, we will tell you. Yes, we will. Uh, even for the hard ones, the general ones. We'll eventually tell you. So if you want to try to figure it out, go for it. And for this first one, all three that were guessed, Magnum, Loch Ness, and Drakenfire, none of those are correct. Ooh. No one's gotten it yet. That clip that I used was actually from Viper at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Oh, really? Now, really, Viper. this is because it was the clearest clip that I could find. Oh, uh, okay. That's why that one was picked. All right. That is a great ride, though. It's a great ride. I'm a little disappointed. I wanted Dragon Fire. <laughs> Sorry. It's probably hard to find a clear clip. Yeah, it's like... That one. <laughs> a ride that's been closed for so many years. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't have been able to guess that. Because I, I wouldn't have if, really uh, if you didn't do it. Yeah, <laughs> if you didn't pull the sound. Because really, yeah, Arrow Lift Hills—they all pretty much sound the same. I thought so too. Nick B actually says different. He thinks some sound, and he has this in quotes, more industrial than others. I'm not quite sure what he means by that, but uh, he can hear a difference between some of them. All right. And that's the comment show. So we really do read your comments. Yes. Did, we, did, did I forget to read? Great show. <laughs> From my dad. Big Daddy, Daddy Cool. Big Daddy Cool writes great show about the Me and My Arrow episode. He really liked it. Couldn't stop telling me about it. <laughs> uh, we may not get around to responding to all of the comments, but we do read them all. Yeah, we may not get serious much on this show, but uh, we actually do appreciate all the feedback. We, uh, we appreciate all the listening that you guys do. Yes, thank you. That's that's a real thanks for listening. That's a real thank you. Not shameless promotion. That's a real thank you right there. So this has been Thanks for Writing 2.0. <laughs> <laughs>